Hi everybody, welcome back to Doobrie's Day. Today on Doobrie's Day, TV OS 12.1 Beta 5. I additionally go through a lot of the settings on TV OS 12 that you may or may not be aware of. Let's go guys. Okay guys, we've now updated to TV OS 12.1 Beta 5. There's only a minor update. Okay guys, I wanted to use this video, apart from updating to TV OS 12.1 Beta 5, but also show you some of the advanced techniques that you may not be aware about of TV OS uh, 12. So, first things first, I've got a video up here, Beetlejuice, on offer at the moment, go and get it guys, great film from the 80s. Um, when you play the video, there's a few things you can do to move forward and backwards into the video, which you may not be aware of. Let me show you those. So I'm just going to hit play, and then hit play. And as you can see, the video will start. Um, I will start from the beginning. I'll have my controller on screen here just so you can see it. Now, the first thing you notice is that the video is playing. If I double click the right hand side here, it will go forward 10 seconds every single time. You may not be aware of that, but every single time I click on this, it goes forward 10 seconds. So you can see down here. The other really good thing about this is you can use Siri to go forward and backwards. So if I press and hold Siri and say go forward 10 minutes, you'll see what happens. Go forward 10 minutes. It then moves the video 10 minutes. And it'll play. And off it goes. So another thing you can do, go forward 30 minutes. It jumps straight along the timeline. Go to the start. takes it right back to the beginning. So that's one of the first tips. The second tip is when you're playing in a video, um, if you scroll down from the top, on the videos on um, the iTunes store, you actually get all of the um, sections that you can jump to. So with any film uh, on the old DVDs, you used to be able to jump to certain sections of the film. And this one you pull down, go to info, and you scroll left or right and you can pick the section that you're interested in. So, for example, section 8 on this film, it'll jump straight to that section when they have the big heads. Coming out there. So that's the first thing. Coming out of the videos, let's now talk about the settings under the settings section. Tip number two, settings. Let's step through these because people may not have gone through these. Um, general. About. First of all, it tells you the name that you've called your Apple TV. In this case, I've called it Home Cinema. The model number. I'm running a 64 gig. Oops, excuse me, come back up there. I'm running a 64 gig. The serial number, which I will blur out in the video. What version of tvOS we're running on here? I'm running on the 602A, which is the beta 5 of 12.1. The resolution we're currently tracking at, 2016-2160p. Ultra HD, 50 hertz, and that's really important for my camera here, so I have to make sure that the camera's set to 50 hertz so I don't get the flickering. My IP address and my Ethernet address, and again, I will blur a couple of things out. So it's how to get quick information about your Apple TV. Screen savers. Um, I've got mine set down to Arial, but you can use your photo library or your home sharing or even your music library. So let's go into the photos. These are animals, flowers, landscapes, nature, and shot on the iPhone. So you can have these just scrolling past in the background. Next one's home sharing. Now, if you've got home sharing, so on, in the home here, we've got a, a NAS, and I had an iTunes library set up on the NAS, I can then connect to that and watch my films from there. Ah. Okay, here we go. So this is interesting. So when you change your screensaver, so if we change it to, say, Apple Photos, come out of there, and pick shot on iPhone, then go back a level, you'll show that these will change depending on which setting you've chosen. So at the moment I typically have uh, the aerial screensavers, but if I've got um, photographs in this particular scenario, then you can change your transition from random cascade, flip up, floating down, etc. So let's do some origami as an example, press menu button, menu button, menu button, and then you can show off your screensavers. And you can see it's now doing the origami flicking. So I wonder if we can flick to the next one. No, you can't. But it does show that it changes. We'll try the music in a moment. There we go. So these are all shot on iPhone. Another type of screensaver. Let's come out of there. Let's now go and try the music. Let's go into here. Go to general. 
go to screen savers. We are going to change the type to music library. Come out one section, go to the menu button, start after five minutes. Now I want to start it after two minutes and show music. I'll do a quick preview. And it shows me all of my music that I've got on there. So this is uh, music I've got in my library. So I'm subscribed to Apple Music. You've got me and my toothbrush, baby driver, blah, blah, blah. So it shows you your music. And I believe it would, should start playing as well. Maybe it just shows you. I'm not 100% certain on that. Maybe someone can tell me. Um, let's go back. I'm going to put that back to the aerial screensaver. So we've done Apple Photos, Home Sharing if you had it, I've not got that set up, and Music Library. So you can see different types of screensavers. Uh, come out of here. Uh, let's go next. Appearance, light or dark or automatic. So in dark, my battery on my screen, you can see everything suddenly goes darker. So when you're in your main screen, everything's black in the background. It may be something you guys want to change. Going back. We'll change that, I'll leave that dark actually. Sleep after 15 minutes, so when will your Apple TV go into sleep mode? You can change that from 15 minutes to 10 hours or never. I leave mine on 15 minutes because I'm not always watching TV. Accessibility, um, so if you need uh, subtitles or captioning or voiceovers, these are all available for you inside of the Apple TV. Now I personally um, don't need these particular items for my, my watching of a, a video, but they are available in case you need to use those. Audio descriptions, as it says here, when available, automatically plays audio descriptions. Voiceovers, you can zoom if you have perhaps eyesight issues, you can have the video zoomed in. Uh, next item, restrictions. So this is to start uh, protecting your Apple TV from perhaps if you've got children or vulnerable people who you don't want to be able to just buy films on Apple TV, you can restrict it. So you can change your passcode. You can either allow or deny the purchases inside of Apple TV or in-app purchases. I know there's scary stories of people on the internet who uh, allow their children to access, say, their iPhone or iPad or, or their Apple TV, and then they end up buying thousands of pounds worth of in-app purchases. Um, allow content. Music and postcards, I'm allowing everything, but if you had uh, young children that you let them watch some young you know, children films or cartoons, you may not want them to watch particular things. Um, you can then restrict films, TV programs, apps, and then you can also have Siri to um, uh, show or remove explicit language. Very useful. Game Center, you can let people play games or screen recording inside of the Apple TV. I need to try that actually and then put some of that video up. Okay, next item, conference room displays. Click on that. Oh, these are whether you allow or deny them. Now, interesting, you can't change any of these settings. unless you return them on. And I need to put a passcode in. So I'll just put one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And come down. I can now allow or restrict the settings, but you have to set that pin number first. Uh, conference room displays allow or reject those. Location services, that might be important to you. They don't want people to know where you are. Okay, let me come out of here. Let me turn this off. Uh, restrictions off. One, two, three, four. Uh, restrictions now off. Okay, so that's restrictions. Privacy. Location services are off. By default, you may choose to have location services off. It shows you uh, other people where you are, especially if you're doing YouTube videos. Photos. Go into photos. Apps I've requested to access your photos will appear here. So no apps have requested to access my photos. HomeKit, again, if you've got HomeKit and you're using it to control your lights or your sockets, you would come into here to look after that. Analytical data, you may or may not decide to share this information to Apple. I choose not to. Uh, limit ad tracking. So um, this is, allows Apple to provide targeted apps to you. Now you may want to limit that so you don't get lots of ads coming through. Coming out of here, Siri, Siri is on. Uh, Siri, Siri is in English. Um, you can change Siri to be Australian, Canadian, or US. I'm in the UK, so I'm gonna keep it as UK. Uh, dictation and privacy, this will just tell you about it. Um, next one, keyboard and dictation. Previous used emails, so that's my email address. Um, it's not hidden, it's on the channel, so you can see that, but if 
if um, I'm filling in an email address on a website and I'm on the Apple TV, it'll pick it up automatically from here. Dictation is on, so it allows you to use Siri to dictate. Uh, this is all about um, dictation and privacy. Language, English, so if you want to change your language, you can change it here, and the same for your region. So if you move house or something like that to a different country, you can change it here. Storage, it tells you how much storage you're using for the items that you've got on your Apple TV. So we can see you're using 74 meg for Prime, 68 meg for YouTube, blah, blah, blah. By the way, Infuse, if you haven't got Infuse, absolutely fantastic program for watching your home videos. Background app refresh. So if your apps are gonna be updating the background when it's running, it could take up some of your data. It's something that you may wish to turn off. I leave it on for things like Netflix. Uh, set time and date. Um, I actually want mine set automatically, um, but it means I've got to turn on location services, so not for the moment for this video. And time zone, I'm in London. So that's general. Account is my personal account, so I'm not gonna demonstrate that to you. Video and audio. Format, 4K HDR. So I'm running a 4K projector, as I've talked about in previous uh, videos, and I'm running at 50 hertz. Now everything has to be synced. So 50 hertz, 50 hertz on the camera, 50 hertz on the videos, etc. Now I can drop it to 1080p or SDR if I don't want a um, uh, high, high definition resolution. Um, I can drop down to a whole magnitude of different settings here. And the other formats, we can go higher or lower depending, so I can drop it down to 480p SDR, uh, standard definition. I'm not sure I really want to do that, but you can also change it down to 24 hertz. So I'm going to leave that on the top setting. Now, if you're trying to use your Apple TV on a new TV um, and it's not working and the screen flickers or something similar, it could be down to the format. Chroma. Um, this here says, because a high quality picture, it's compatible with most TVs. Now, I actually haven't tried 422 improves clarity, but it requires high speed cables. Now, I've got a fiber HDMI cable going from the projector down to the amp. So I'm going to try 422 and let's see if it makes any difference. It's worth a try. If I can get better quality, then you're going to grab it, right? No sparkling, 422, better quality. Now I'll go into the videos in a moment, give that a try. Calibrate, um, you can calibrate the uh, picture. So especially on a projector, you can see the full screen and minimum screen here. Um, you want to make sure that that's all aligned. So with my projector, for these corners here, over this corner here and the corner there, top and bottom, I'll make sure it's square. Uh, color bars. You can see the color bars that the projector's projecting. Um, obviously, you want your blacks to be blacks, your whites to be white. This is a white painted wall. Um, basically, you're going from quite a dark black. The lights are on at the moment, so it wouldn't be as black. Uh, all the way down to the white over here. That looks like a pretty good picture. Coming out of there, audio. Audio output. I send the audio from my source, which is the Apple TV, down to the amp. So it's HDMI cable from there. You can change it. I can send the audio downstairs if I wish, but I don't I want to keep it upstairs. Audio format. We've talked about this numerous times on some of the other videos. I'm in Dolby Atmos. I've got Dolby Atmos upstairs. Um, Dan says we don't have Dolby Atmos, so we have it as standard stereo. Um, reduce loud sounds. So um, I don't want to reduce the sounds. I've got a subwoofer up here. I've got a cinema sound up here. I want the sounds. Navigation clicks I happen to like, so I keep them on it, but you can turn it off in that setting if you so wish. Uh, sound effects and music, again, same sort of thing. You can turn it off if you wish. Audio mode. Um, you can change it from 16-bit, which can be fairly rubbish audio, to auto. Audio language is default. You can change it to any language that you prefer. And subtitle language, depending on which country and what language you speak, you could change it here. So that's video and audio. Airplay seems to be broken in this version at the moment, so I need to look at that. So I'm not going to go through the Airplay settings. Remotes and devices. So as you can see, we've got uh, tracking, which is on here, and the speed of the tracking. Home button is on the Apple TV, and remote is full of power. Uh, Bluetooth. So if you're going to connect up Bluetooth devices, this is where you do it. So if some people have a Bluetooth um, soundbar, this is where you configure your Bluetooth soundbar. Remote apps and devices. As you can see, I've got my iPhones. Uh, myself and Mrs. Deep's iPhone is floating around. So we could pair that or unpair it. And that might be part of the reason why I've got problems communicating with the Apple TV to project AirPlay to my TV. I need to figure out why. Learn remote. So if you uh, replace your remote or your remote dies, this is where you you change it. Uh, home cinema control, control TVs and receivers. Um, 
I don't use these at the moment. I just use this just for volume. That's all I use it for. Um, I turn the amp on with uh, my amp controller and then I use the controller here for the sound. That seems to work really well for us. And volume control, as I said, is via the infrared. Applications. Uh, automatically update apps as you would on your iPhone or automatically install apps. I don't want to automatically install apps. I want to make the choice what apps I install. App settings, and there's a whole heap of things in here. So what I've done in my TV app is show all the new features and I've added into my TV the iPlayer, the ITV Hub, my Fire Prime Video, etc, etc. And it's really important to do this because when you then go to the TV app, which I'll show you in a, in a moment, it brings all of that content together into one place rather than jumping around between Netflix and Prime Video and ITV, it brings it all into one place. In fact, let me just jump there now. So I just go back to the TV app and show you, this is this icon here, click on that. And what you see, this shows you everything that we've just been watching, because we had Beetlejuice on a moment ago. If I scroll down, as you can see, you've got the BBC, uh, Best of BBC iPlayer, Best of ITV Hub, Best of My5, The News, Schools A, and across here, you've got things like Prime. These are all the items from Prime. Um, further down, you've got all of the Apple Music. Um, this basically brings everything together in one place. So as I said, you've got Prime on there, You've got Apple TV, um, uh, sorry, you've got uh, the BBC iPlayer, you've got your Apple uh, videos that you've purchased or Apple videos that they expect you to, to buy from them. So uh, it's all in one place. So we've been watching Nightmare on Elm Street, for example, on iTunes. We've also been watching Killing Eve. Um, if you haven't seen it, by the way, go and check out Killing Eve, BBC iPlayer, absolutely fantastic. Um, and it shows you what you've been watching or what you're in the middle of watching. Hellboy is on iTunes. So iTunes is on here, iPlay is on here, Netflix is on here somewhere. Um, it brings it all in, into one place. So again, another good option for you to look at. Now going back to the settings and drafts, this is the same now for all of these items. Each of these items, I wouldn't perceive to go through all of these with you, but each of the applications will give you settings that you can adjust for every single application you've got installed. So for example, I'll just this will be the last one on here. iTunes, video resolution, I want the best available. Quick start, get the film going. Limit purchases and rentals to standard definition. No, thank you, I want a high definition. Sort films in wishes by date, or you can sort it by alphabetically, depending on what you want. I'll change it alphabetically. And sort TV programs, I'll sort those out alphabetically as well. Coming out of there, uh, network. Um, I'm connected on Ethernet. I'm using a standard uh, IP address, same subnet internally, 192.168 address range. And it's got my Ethernet, which I will obviously blur out. System, we've been in here many times. This is where you do your software update. There's the legal notices. And inside of what's new, tells you all the things we've been talking about. Dolby Atmos, uh, the aerials, the remote control on your phone and on your, um, your controller, and the passwords, which obviously you can type in there through your phone, and it will automatically add them to the Apple TV. Your reset and restart is also there. And finally, sleep now. So that's all of the settings. As you can see, there's quite a lot of settings there. Um, a couple of other things I will show you. Um, if you double click the home button, uh, which is this button here, uh, it shows you what applications are running and you can scroll left or right. So everything that we've been opening, uh, they're already running. So I've got Netflix, Plex open, Apple Music open. So you don't have to keep going into the same thing every single time. So let's just double click in this home button. Scroll left or right. And then to get rid of them, I believe you just push it up like you do on your phone to get rid of them. And they're therefore not running anymore. Get rid of those, get rid of those, get rid of that, get rid of that. Back to the home setting. So you can double click that button there. So guys, that is an overview of all of the extra pieces on Apple TV. Um, there's probably about 20 or 30 settings there at least that I've gone through. I hope you find that useful. Some of those you may or may not have known about. Please um, have a look. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, uh, give it a share, remember to subscribe, hit that bell, and I look forward to seeing you next time on Dubris Day. Thanks guys, bye bye for now.